big catch on Saturday. Just walk me through what you saw on that play and, and just get able to help the team. Uh, like um, yeah, so that's just one of the plays we've been practicing all week. And um, we hit it a bunch of times coming into the game. And then we got the coverage we were looking for. And we Carson gave me a good ball. And we had a big, uh, we had a big explosive to start the to start the drive. Yeah, when you hear or I guess see that play call coming in, do you, what, what are the emotions as a football player knowing, hey, this has been designed for me. This is my play. Um, yeah, I mean, it honestly happens so fast. Like I'm not even really thinking about that. Like I'm just getting lined up. I mean, I'm check, checking the defense, like looking for how I'm going to run it. Like there's a couple of different ways I could take that route, and then I just see what the defense is giving me and I just kind of run it. Like I try not to think about it too much. You don't want to overthink it. Boston, you were one of nine guys that had a catch on Saturday. Carson and the offense really able to distribute it evenly. Mm -hmm. uh, what does it say about you know his performance, where he's at, and where this offense is at, given it's just you know one week into the season? Yeah, I think it shows that Carson has a great ability to read the field, and I think it just shows how deep our offense is. Um, we have so many weapons in each position, and I think that's a great thing that our team has going for us, and that was on display on Saturday. Awesome. We heard buzz about you as a freshman, and then you wind up getting hurt. Talk me through coming back from that injury and trying to work your way back and obviously getting able to play the end of the year. Yeah, it was really tough, honestly, um, coming into the season thinking I'm going to have a bigger role and then just getting hurt right before. So came back, didn't have as much juice as I had at first. Took me a while to get it back. Started to get it towards the end of the season, but just still didn't feel like the right, the same player I was. And then now coming back into the season, it's a, I feel great. Um, it's the best I've felt in a long time, and I'm excited to be able to get out there and be 100%. Lawson, uh, following up on that, that's a question I was going to ask. I mean, we heard a lot of buzz about you last spring. I think Kirby talked about you in bowl practice and won't fight people. Can you? Can you give us some insight into how you came in and what your mentality was to make that sort of impression in the spring before the injury? Yeah, um, I feel like I was really prepared coming from where I come in high school, playing big time Georgia football. Um, and then coming in, I just kind of like played my role. They gave me a lot of opportunities in bowl practice. I feel like I did a good job of taking advantage of them. I obviously had a lot of like ups and downs, but I did get a chance to shine a little bit and it was, it was a really fun time. Give us a, a welcome to Georgia moment or something, that, whatever Kirby was talking about. I mean, was as far as mixing it up with maybe some of the older, tougher guys on the team? Uh, I, I don't really remember, to be honest. I mean, I had a couple of run-ins on, like, special teams. Me and Chris Smith, like, Chris Smith always looked down for me. Me and him got along well. And then he would always give me my flowers. But besides that, no, not really. Obviously, you guys go out and add a tight end this offseason. What's going through your head when you hear that news? And just what's your mentality still trying to compete for a uh, position and playing time? Yeah, uh, I thought Ben was a great addition to our room, and I'm glad we went out and got him. He came in and is coming with a great hunger and a great addition to our room that we needed. And I think it's elevated all of our games, bringing in a guy like that. So I'm really appreciative of what Harley went and got out. Ben, I think we, I, I'm thankful for what he brought to this room. Far be it from us the first time we talked to you about uh, uh, being the son uh, uh, of your father and your uncle's triplets that came from Georgia. You got any uh, funny memories? That you ever mix them up when they're all together? And uh, <laughs> and, and what are your what are your first memories? Uh, I, I assume that you spent a lot of time coming back to Georgia as as you were uh, growing up. Uh, yeah, no, definitely now I can tell the difference. But I remember being younger, I would see pictures of them in college and. I would have no idea besides the number they had on. Um, yeah, and then just early memories. Like I remember being young, we'd always, one of the games we always went to was the spring game. We always came back and went to the spring game. And I remember, I want to say Murray State a couple years ago. Um, I mean, it was the game George Pickens had that big like layout catch. I remember they, uh, they did something, they honored my uncle on the field at halftime and that was like cool to see. Also, you got to be around Brock Bowers a lot last year. Are there any lessons you took from being a teammate, being in that tight end room with him that you care when you go forward? Yeah, I think I say this all the time, but my biggest thing I learned from Brock is just how consistent you need to be to be an elite player. I feel like there are so many players that um, flash and show what they can do, but they don't do it on a consistent enough basis. And Brock was elite at that. He was the same guy every single day. And that was my biggest takeaway from him is just being consistent. 
Jordan beat me the question again. I'm going to follow up on the Brock Powers question in terms of what you saw from him and when, when did you realize uh, Brock Powers' greatness or some of the things you saw from him individually? Well, I feel like I knew it before I got to college, honestly. But just seeing it up close in person was just like the dude never took a rep off, never took a day off. Like every single period of every single day was just like 100%. Like even on special teams, it, and he wasn't even on special teams. They just put him in the drills and he never lost. And that was like my biggest takeaway. Like this dude never loses. And also, how, uh, in what ways do you think you improved both as a receiver from last year to right now? Um, I would definitely say my perimeter blocking. I feel like that was one of my biggest weaknesses last year after I came back. And I feel like that's one of my biggest strengths right now. Coming back to your family just for a minute. Were you kind of raised Bulldog in your DNA? Were there any other choices? Or were you always, was this always the destination? And I would imagine they're all proud to see you wearing the red and black. Yeah, I mean, definitely grew up at Georgia as my dream school. But I definitely like weighed my options coming out of high school. It wasn't just all Georgia for me. Um, Georgia happened to be the best place for me. And it did happen to be my dream school at the same time, so it was a perfect place for me to end up at. Yeah, what have you learned about London Humphrey since he's transferred in and how has he helped this team? Uh, yeah, London just brings some extra juice for us. You know, London brings some experience of playing, which he showed on Saturday. London's a gamer and he's uh, he brings a lot of speed and he's got great hands and he's just shown that over and over in camp. And he's a great effort guy, a great blocker, a great dude that we need on our team. Yeah, you talked about family. You talked a little bit about your recruitment process. You're not so little big for your little brother. Mm -hmm. It's now in the midst of his. Just talk about you know what you're doing to maybe help him out through his process and his growth as a football player. Yeah, I mean, I try to help Carter. Just, I mean, I'm obviously not a D lineman, but I see some of the coaching points that happen all the time, and I try to hopefully get him ahead of the curve a little bit and learn some things now that a lot of kids have to learn the hard way when they get to college. And I, that's my biggest thing. I'm trying to get into him. It's just, it's way different when you get to college, and I'm trying to stamp some of those things in his mind now before he learns too late. Yards after catch always appear to be a staple of Georgia's tight end room. How does Coach Hartley go about instilling that within you guys? I mean, we work on it like every single day. We have this drill called a weapons drill, and Hartley has us do it all the time. Um, and then obviously Brock, that would be one of his, the best things he was at. That just kind of got passed down to us, you know, like him leading the example, and we got to kind of uphold that. Um, so yeah, definitely Hartley. Start, it starts an indie drill, and then yeah, that's about it. What are your impressions of Nate Frazier as a, as a person and a player? You know, he came in obviously uh, after a lot of his uh, freshman teammates. Uh, a few months you've been around him. Yeah, I mean he came in with his hair on fire, and he's just runs. That's exactly how he runs. Like he's done a great job of stepping in and learning quick because he wasn't the mid year, so he's had less time, and he's done a great job of learning the offense, and he just. He run he like he runs so hard. He's always keeps his feet rolling. So he's done a great job. What's it like uh, facing Jared Walker when he's going inside, outside, moving around and you have to pick him up? It's a great learning experience, great way to get better. Like that dude's the elite, the best of the best. Our whole linebacker court. Um they're all the best of the best. So going against them every day, especially Jay Walk as a pass rusher, um, that's one of the hardest things to defend and then so yeah, going against him is just great reps, gets me a whole lot better. Can you describe Jalen Walker as a pass rusher? What are, what are his strengths and how do you try to cope, defend? Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's a great, he's a super, super high effort guy. He's really strong, really fast. Like, he has all the things to make him a great pass rusher. And he handles his business off the field. So, I mean, when a dude as talented as he is puts everything together, it's a hard thing to stop. Yeah, a lot of questions about things that you might have taken or try to take from Brock. Is there anything that he did or that you watched him do where you were just like, well, there's just no way I can do that? <laughs> I mean, we've all seen the Bama clip his freshman year yeah. when he broke all those tackles on that screen. Like, I mean, when he does some stuff like that, like that's crazy. But a lot of the stuff, I mean, it is like doable. He's just so consistent at being so good about it. And he always showed up on Saturdays. So that's one thing I've just got to learn is take it from the practice field and show it in games consistently. When the quarterback gives you a chance, you got to make it every time. And that's what he did. Time for one more. Anybody has one for Lawson? Okay, Lawson. We got one more. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. One more. Can you describe a weapons drill? Weapons drill? Uh, yes. It's uh, it starts off with a bubble screen. We catch a bubble screen, and then we run down. We got a equipment guy holding a holding the dummy. We stiff arm it, and then we run like another ten yards, and then we like 
truck, two of our player managers, <laughs> and then it's like a hurl. It's like it's like a fifty yard drill where you do like every move you can do. But the manager love it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, boss. Thanks, boss.